Good day everyone for the last topic for MP Chem 3, we will be discussing your spectrophotometry. The learning objectives of this topic are as follows. First is to be able to understand the principles of light absorbance and transmittance. Second is to identify the components, parts, and operations of the spectrophotometer. And lastly, to determine the mechanisms of other analytic techniques. Now, when we say analytic techniques and instrumentations, these are the foundations for all the measurements that you would encounter in your clinical chemistry. Under your clinical chemistry, you would be able to encounter at least four major techniques. You have your spectrometry, your luminescence, your electroanalytical methods, and your chromatography. Under your spectrometry are as follows. You have your spectrophotometry, your atomic absorption, and your mass spectrometry. For luminescence, you have your two uh, fluorescence and chemiluminescence. Next, under electroanalytical techniques, are your electrophoresis, potentiometry, and amperometry. And lastly, for chromatography, you have your liquid, gas, and thin layer. So, for our discussion for this topic, we'll be focusing on the first major technique, which is your spectrometry. As your luminescence, electroanalytical techniques, and chromatography were already discussed to you in our previous topics. So when we say spectrophotometry, its principle involves the measurement of light transmitted by a solution to determine the concentration of light absorbing substances in the solution. So a general overview of what a spectrophotometry looks like is this one on your screens. So meron kayong light source. Now kapag nag-reflect yung light na yon, magba-bypass siya sa inyong solution. Now whatever it is that you'd be able to transmit light into this uh in, into your solution, yun yung marireread yung output. So that's how your spectrophotometry follows its principle. Now, the machine that reads your spectrophotometry is known as your spectrophotometer. This is used to measure the light transmitted by a solution to determine the concentration of the light-absorbing substance in the solution. In the old times, ganito yung unang or traditional look ng ating spectrophotometer. Ang ginagamit pa talaga is meter for you to be able to read your output for or your results for reading your absorbance. Pero ngayon, since ano na tayo, digitalized na tayo, pwede nyo nang basahin yung output nyo as yung number itself already. Yung, for example, 0 0.298, ganun. Pwede na siyang ganun. Hindi na natin need mag-interpret ng meter. Okay? Now, most instruments today use filters, prisms, and gratings to be able to select or isolate a narrow range of incident wavelength. Now, the radiant energy that passes through an object will be partially reflected, absorbed, or transmitted. Now, for you to be able to better understand your spectrometry, you should familiarize yourselves with the following terminologies. First one is your electromagnetic radiation or simply EMR. This refers to the photons of energy traveling in waves. Okay, medyo waves yung mga pag-uusapan natin because your light travels through waves. Okay? Now, the energy that we are pertaining to in this topic is transmitted through electromagnetic waves that is characterized by frequency and wavelength. Okay? You now have your two terms. You have your wavelength and frequency. Let's discuss first what are wavelengths. When we say wavelengths, this is the linear distance between two successive peaks. So, if we're going to look at this figure, two successive peaks. So, one peak and then another peak. So, this part, this part, or from this part to another 
this is known as your wavelength another wavelength from this one towards to the other peak this is known as your another wavelength and so on and so forth okay now your wavelength is expressed in nanometers and it has its different parts you have your crest and your throw when we say crest this is the top portion of your wavelength so ito cresto guys okay ito crest this one is crest this one is also crest and when we say throw this is the bottom part of a wavelength so ito throw this one is throw, this one is throw, this one is another throw. Okay? Next is your next term we have is your amplitude. This refers to the height of the peak and is measured from the equilibrium towards the crest or the throw. It may also be defined as it is the measurement between the crest and the midpoint of a wave. So if we're going to look at our wave. No, hahatiin natin siya into two. We have now your midline or your center line. Now, if uh, based on the definition for amplitude, it is the uh, measurement between your crest and the midpoint of a wave. So, in this case, from crest to a midpoint of a wave, this is known as your amplitude. Okay? Pwede din naman from the throw towards your center line. This is also known as a amplitude. Okay? So, next definition that we are going to determine is your frequency. When we say frequency, this is the wave cycles that is passing in a given point in a given period of time. Now, it is also defined as the number of wave peaks per given unit of time. Okay? So, if we have this example on your screens... If we're going to define frequency from this starting wave, no? so isang from crest towards the throw, that is one frequency or one wave cycle. Okay, so that is one. And then from throw to crest, that is two. Okay, that's the second cycle or wave cycle you have. Okay, next, from crest again towards your throw, that's your third wave cycle. Okay? And then fourth, fifth, sixth, seven, and seven and a half. So in this case, in our illustration on your screens, you have at least seven and a half wave cycles. Now these wave cycles are interpreted using your frequency. Okay? Yan. Ganun lang mag-interpret for uh, wavelengths and frequency. Now, the relationship between your wavelength and energy is described by your Planck's formula. And Planck's formula is equal to E is equal to HV, wherein your E is referred to as the energy of photon in joules per second. Your H is your Planck's constant value, which is equivalent to 6.62 times 10 raised to negative 27 erg sec. And lastly, your V corresponds to the photon's frequency. Now, based on Planck's formula, we can at least derive three conclusions. First is that your frequency is inversely proportional two wavelengths okay second one that your electromagnetic radiation or simply your energy is inversely proportional to wavelength and based on our first and second conclusions we can also conclude that both your frequency and energy have an inverse relationship with wavelength so that being said based on the electromagnetic spectrum if you have lower energy on this part you also have a lower frequency and as mentioned kanina your energy and frequency have a inverse relationship with wavelength so therefore if you have lower energy and lower frequency you have longer wavelength and as you can see naman dito sa ating illustration 
Okay? Now, as you go along with your electromagnetic radiation spectrum, umiikli or nagiging shorter ang ating wavelength. Now, with shorter wavelengths, since again, it has a inverse relationship with energy and frequency, with shorter wavelengths, you have higher energy and higher frequency. Okay? Now, examples of radiations or rays that are under in this category are your gamma rays, x-rays, and ultraviolet. And on the opposite side, yung mga rays na may uh, longer wavelength are your radio waves, your microwave radiation, and infrared radiation. Okay? Now, in between your um, your gamma rays and your radio waves are, are your visible light. Now, the visible light falls in between the color violet with 400 nanometers and red at 700 nanometers wavelengths being the approximate limits of the visible spectrum. So, therefore, we can say that visible light is between 400 to 700 nanometers. Okay, so anything that is less than 400 are your ultraviolet light. And anything that is more than 700 are your infrared light. Now, your principle for spectrophotometry follows your Beer's Law, wherein your Beer's Law states that the concentration of a substance is directly proportional to the amount of light absorbed or is inversely proportional to the logarithm of transmitted light. And when we define your absorbance, this refers to the amount of light absorbed wherein it is mathematically derived from percent transmittance. And when we say percent transmittance, this is the ratio of the radiant energy transmitted divided by the radiant energy incident on the sample. Now, your absorbance can also be defined as the negative logarithm of percent transmittance. It is the negative logarithm of percent transmittance. So, based on our derived equations, we can also create a general formula for absorbance as absorbance is equal to A, B, C. Wherein your capital letter A is for absorbance, your small letter A in other references, pwede din siyang maging representation as your E or your Epsilon, which refers to the molar absorptivity. Your B, in other references, pwede din siyang uh, L. Okay? Okay? This refers to the length of light path through the solution. And your C, or small letter C, refers to the molar concentration of absorbing molecules. So, tatandaan, ang general formula natin for absorbance is A is equal to ABC. So, let's apply this uh, equation to some examples. So, we have your first sample problem. MT1 have analyzed an unknown sample that produces an absorbance of 0 0.372. The path length is 1 cm and its concentration is at 2.1 moles per liter. What is the molar absorption of the sample? We have your general formula A is equal to ABC. Your A is the absorbance, which is given 0 0.372. Okay? C A is your molar absorption, which is missing, so let that be your X. And your B is your path length, and that is also given, which is 1 cm. And your C is the concentration of your solution, which is given at 2.1 moles per liter. Gawin natin capital M na lang, no, guys. Okay? Ayan. So, hinahanap natin C, small letter A. So, based on our general formula, we can be able to derive an equation, wherein our equation now would be, Capital A divided by B C is equal to small letter A. Using this equation now, we have now your representation 0 0.372 divided by your B, which is 1 cm. Multiply it with your C, which is 2.1 m equals A. Okay, using uh, computing this in your calculator, you would be able to get an answer of 0 0.177 equals A. Now, ma'am, paano po yung units kasi nasa baba siya? No? Since nasa baba siya, magiging coefficient niyan siya. 
In that case, your final answer now would be 0 0.177 cm negative 1 m negative 1 equals A. So this is now your molar absorption in the sample problem. Next sample problem. A monochromatic radiation is incident on a solution of 0 0.04 molar concentration of an absorbing substance. The intensity of the radiation is reduced to one half of the initial value after passing through a 5 cm length of the solution. Calculate the molar absorption of the substance. So we have your general formula. A is equal to ABC. Your absorbance is not given. So question mark. Next, your A or your molar absorption is asking for you to calculate. So nawawala din siya. Next, your B or your path length is given at 5 cm. And your concentration of the solution is given at 0 0.04 m. Okay? So, since you have two missing values, we can, uh, we should be able to get yung isa muna para makuha natin yung isa. Okay? Now, with that being said, if you can recall a while ago, your absorbance may also be defined as the negative logarithm of your percent transmittance. And your percent transmittance is equal to I over I O times 100. Wherein your I is your transmitted light divided by your I O which is your incident light. And since meron siyang sinabi dun sa second sentence na the intensity of the radiation is reduced to one half of the initial value, meaning to say, from your solution, your incident light, towards your transmitted light, at full capacity of 100%, na-reduce daw siya into one half. Ano bang one half ng 100? That is 50%. Okay? So we can now assume that the percent transmittance is equal to 50 divided by 100 ma omit na yung 100% guys kasi yun yung in natin for your incident light. So your answer now here would be 0. Point, would now be 0. 0.5. And then using your equation A is equal to negative logarithm of your percent transmittance. That is negative logarithm. Multiply it with 0. 0.5. Your answer here would be 0. 0.30102999. 957. So, this is now your absorbance. So, given na yung ating absorbance, nawawala na lang si molar absorption. So, you can now go back to your general formula of A is equal to A, B, C. Deriving your equation, you would be able to get a equation of A, capital A, divided by B, C is equal to A. And your absorption is, uh, absorbance rather, is 0 0.30102999957 divided by your path length, which is 5 centimeters. Multiply it with your concentration of solution, 0 0.04 m equals A. Your answer now here on the calculator would be 1.505 cm negative 1 m negative 1. So this is now your answer for this equation or sample problem. Gets po ba? Let's go over now with the different components of your spectrophotometer. Again, your spectrophotometer is the machine that is used to measure the light transmitted by a solution to determine the concentration of a light absorbing substance in the solution. We you have your different components, your light source, entrance slit, monochromator, exit slit, your sample solution that is present in your cuvette, your photo detector, and lastly, your digital display or output. First component of your spectrophotometer is your light source. Your light source provides polychromatic light and must generate sufficient radiant energy or power to measure the analyte of interest. It is an intense beam of light directed to the monochromator and the sample. So from light source towards your monochromator and then towards your sample for you to be able to produce an output. Now, you have two types of light source. You have your continuum source and your line source. For continuum source, this emits radiation that changes in intensity and widely used in the laboratory. Examples of your continuum source are your tungsten light, deuterium light lamp, rather, and xenon discharge lamp. Your tungsten light bulb, also known as your incandescent tungsten or tungsten iodide lamp, is the most commonly used light source in the visible and near-infrared region. Again, visible and near-infrared region. Next, your deuterium lamp is routinely used to provide UV radiation in analytic spectrometers. And lastly, your xenon discharge lamp produces a continuous source of radiation which covers both your UV and visible range. 
On the other hand, your line source emits limited radiation and wavelength. Examples of your line sources are your mercury and sodium vapor lamps, your hollow cathode lamp, and your light amplification by simulated emission of radiation or simply your laser. Other examples of your light sources are your mercury arc, your deuterium lamp, hydrogen lamp, MERS blower, and glow bar or silicone carbide. Next component is your entrance slit. Your entrance slit minimizes unwanted or stray light and prevents the entrance of scattered light into the monochromator system. Siyempre, ito yung light source nyo. Dapat specific lang yung papapasukin yung light para specific lang din yung ma-detect ma ni monochromator. Okay? Now, your entrance slit, again, minimizes or removes any unwanted light and that is known as your stray light. That is described as any light that travels upon the detector that does not originate from the light sources. Stray light yung mga ayaw nating nade-detect. Okay? Next component is your monochromator. Your monochromator functions as a means of isolation of individual wavelengths of light provided by the radiant source. You have different types of monochromators. First one is your glass filters. Your glass filters are the least expensive, simple, and useful, but they're not that precise. Okay? But it usually pass a relative wide band of radiant energy and have low transmittance of the selected wavelength. Kaya ginagamit pa din siya. Okay? Next are your interference filters. Your interference filters produce monochromatic light based on the principle of constructive interference of waves. Now, light waves enter one side of the filter and are reflected at the second surface. Next type of monochromator are your prism. Your prism are wedge-shaped pieces of glass, quartz, or sodium chloride. This can be rotated, which allows certain or desired wavelength to be able to pass through your exit slit. And lastly, you have your diffraction gratings. Your diffraction grating is the most commonly used type of monochromator at present because it consists of parallel grooves etched on a polished surface. Meron siyang mga ganun, mga etch etch. Okay? Because of those parallel grooves, your light could be able to diffract or reflect, thus forming your separation of wavelengths by bending as they pass a sharp corner. Your next component is your exit slit. This controls the width of the light beam and only allows a narrow fraction of the spectrum to reach the sample cuvette. Now, when we say band pass, this is the total range of wavelength transmitted. So, yun yung nagpa-pass through na from your monochromator towards your sample or your cuvette. Now, the narrower your band pass, the greater the resolution. Because you are very selective on which light lang yung pwedeng mag-pass through. Okay? Next component are your sample cell or simply your cuvette. This is the container for your solutions in a spectrophotometer. Now, you have different types of cuvettes. It may be made from alumina silica glass, which is commonly used because it could be able to let light pass through between 350 to 2000 nanometers. It can also be made from quartz or plastic, which is used when you are requiring for visible and UV spectra. And it can also be made from borosilicate glass, which is suitable in the visible portion of the spectrum. Next component are your photodetectors or simply detectors. Its purpose is for you to be able to convert now the transmitted radiant energy into its equivalent amount of electrical energy. Okay? So from light source, may pinapasok kang light through ent entrance slit, and then monochromator chooses what specific wavelength you are measuring to. And then it would be able to pass through through your exit slit. From exit slit, you would now have your incident light towards your transmitted light. Now, this transmitted light would now be converted into a electrical energy which is uh, which is detected by your photo detectors. And then, yun na yung magiging output nyo. Okay? We have different types of photo detectors. We have your photo cell or also known as your barrier layer cell. This is the least expensive and durable and composed of film of light sensitive material, usually an iron or selenium, over a thin layer of silver. It's uh, disadvantage is that it is temperature sensitive. 
Next type of photo detector is your photo tube. This is similar with your photo cell that uh, that has has to guys has a sensitive material then gives off electrons when light energy strikes in it. It requires outside voltage for operation. Okay? So it has a cathode and anode. Ito yung unique sa kanya compared with photo cell. Next is your photomultiplier tube. Your photomultiplier tube, or simply PM, detects and amplifies radiant energy and is 200 times more sensitive than your photo tube. That's why it's the most commonly used detector. And lastly, you have your photodiode. Your photodiode lacks internal amplification, thus it's not as sensitive as your photomultiplier tube. But it is used for excellent linearity where light levels are adequate. And syempre, yung last component nyo, kung saan kayo magbabasa ng absorbance, is your readout device or simply your display. Okay? Ayan. So, those are the components of your spectrophotometer, light source, entrance lit, monochromator, exit slit, sample solution or sample cell, also known as your cuvette, your detector, and your readout device. Let's go over now with the different types of spectrophotometer. First one is your single beam spectrophotometer. Now, it is the simplest type of spectrometer because it only measures one specified wavelength at a time. And the absorption maximum of the analyte must be known in advance. And your sample and blank are alternatively measured in the same sample chamber. Since pa isa isa, so after one sample, magche check ulit ng blank for accuracy, and then another sample to run through, and then check ulit ng blank, and then sample, and so on and so forth. Okay. The other type of your spectrophotometer is your double beam spectrophotometer. It has at least two types. You have your double beam in space and double beam in time. Now, in general, your double beam spectrophotometer continuously compares both your sample and blank. And it splits your monochromator into two components. One passes through your sample and the other through a reference solution or blank. Okay, kaya siya double beam. Dalawa yung uh, minimeasure niya at both at the same time. Now, in double beam in space, it uses two photo detectors. One for the sample and one for the reference. And when we say double beam in time, it uses only one photo detector, but it alternatively passes the monochromatic light through the sample cuvette and then reference cuvette using a chopper or rotating sector or mirror. Next type are your infrared spectrophotometers. Infrared instrument sources are heated solids and detectors respond to heat rather than to photons. These are used to measure how different materials absorb infrared radiation at various wavelengths. Now you have different types of infrared spectrophotometers. You have your dispersive infrared spectrophotometer and your Fourier transform infrared spectrophotometer. For dispersive infrared spectrophotometer it uses prisms or gratings to separate infrared light into its component wavelengths while your ftir spectrophotometer utilizes a mathematical technique known as your Fourier transform to produce high resolution spectra more quickly and accurately and last type for spectrophotometer is your atomic absorption spectrophotometer or simply your AAS. This measures concentration by detecting absorption of electromagnetic radiation by atoms rather than molecules. No? So until the atomic level na si AAS. Now it detects the absorption of light by free ground state atoms in the vapor phase and measures the light absorbed by atoms dissociated by heat. So, the usual light source for AAS is your hollow cathode lamp with inert gas, usually your helium or argon. So, ito si hollow cathode, papasok siya, mahihit, okay, and then it would reach its ground state uh, level, and then it would pass through your monochromator, and then detector, and then amplifier, and then, ayun na, readout device. Okay, ayun. So that's the last slide for our topic spectrophotometry. My references, my main reference is your clinical chemistry uh, by Bishop and then another reference is your school. So thank you for listening guys.